everybody, this is Birch, and uh, I did this video already, and I think it, it went on a kind of weird ranty bit uh, that I'm sure some of you would find entertaining, but it just, it wasn't quality audio. Um, it, uh, it, it rambled all over the place, so we're going to try this again, um, but a little bit more succinct. Um, so it's, it's about this Popeye controversy, so I got an email here, and I think, um, I don't know, people may be surprised by my answer. And, uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to re-record it uh, was because my answer was kind of all over the place last time. So, so let's, let's get a little bit more direct. So here's the, uh, the email from a viewer, and it goes, uh, Hey, Perch, I'm sure you heard about the recent controversy regarding Popeye. I had heard about that controversy. But some of you may not have. So, uh, you know, for context, uh, this uh, person who's writing this mail is, does a, a very helpful job of explaining what is the, what is the issue. So, uh, full context, the Popeye comic strip is now being helmed by a webcomic writer named Randy Mulholland, who previously drew comics for Popeye's Cartoon Club, which was an anthology of comics by different artists, and Mulholland's comics were well-received by the majority of the Popeye fandom because of his knowledge of Popeye lore, including obscure ones that he referenced in his comics. Because of this, King Features put him in charge of the main strip after High Eisman, who has been on the strip since 1994, retired. Okay, So that is the, the context of the move that was made. That's not what the controversy is about, or at least not yet. Um, but some truth is uh, to, to kind of back up here. Um, Randy Mulholland uh, did have a good reputation, or does, I, I'm not sure, um, does know the lore I, Popeye is not one of my favorite characters of all time, but there it is. There is a mythology that goes back, you know, decades and decades and decades. And so, you know, it, somebody who respects that history, uh, generally well received by, you know, fans of the, the, the strip. So uh, now comes for the controversy bit. Says uh, back to the mail. The controversy is that in an interview he did for Express News, Milholland laid out a number of plans he had for the strip which includes adding new, more diverse characters. I don't think that's what triggered people, but, um, but yes, he did mention that. And the outrage crowd are especially upset after fake news publishers Breitbart, uh, pushers Breitbart, um, mint reported on it and now it reached Fox News. Uh, they also concentrated, and here is the heart of the controversy, I think. They also concentrated on, concentrated on the part where Milholland said Popeye... Are you ready? Is gender fluid? Though I think he was referring to that in E.C. Uh, Seeger's original strips, Popeye would call himself female terms like mother, and it would be played straight, along with stories where Popeye dressed like a woman, referring to himself as amphibious a number of times. In Mulholland's own strips he's done so far, Popeye is still referred to by his male pronouns. Okay. Uh, let's finish up the mail and we'll get to the opinion on it. Uh, so, so I think the outrage reactionaries are just blowing this out of proportion. I personally enjoy Mill Holland's Popeye comics so far, and he also said one of his biggest plans is to bring the strip back to its serialized adventure roots after years of the strip being presented as a gag comic strip. So I'm excited for that. What do you think? So what I think is kind of is, is the emotion I feel is exasperated. And exasperated because it's like teeing up the perfect shot. It's it's lining everything up. It's it's doing things just right, getting getting all the, the right pieces in place. You know, they get this new person who's going to come in, uh, take over the strip, has a, a deep knowledge of Popeye, understands the history, understands the characters. Gets and and even the uh, the the line about adding more diverse characters. Well, you could take that a number of ways, um, and and I'm not going to give the guy benefit of the doubt due to the gender fluid comment, but you know, in a rational, reasonable world, saying we're going to add more diverse characters once upon a time was not about race or social justice or any of that kind of stuff. It could literally mean you're going to add a talking lobster and a bird and, and all kinds of wacky stuff, and Popeye does need a bigger supporting cast, absolutely. So, but, but we don't live in those times anymore. We live in the new times, which means that the word diverse, because you could have said, you know, I'm going to add a, uh, a wider cast. I'm going to add a bigger group of people and then do whatever you want. And nobody would have blinked an eye at that. But now these words have weight to them. 
Should they? I mean, no, but here we are anyway. Here, this is this is what the world has come to. And it's partially come to that because of um, the second term. So, I, you know, when you say, I believe Popeye is gender fluid, you're being disingenuous at best, and you're playing a, a, a game. Uh, I mean, a dumb game. Um, that game is a uh, wink nod to one group of people who are going to immediately jump up and down and say, aha, we claim him. He's our, you know, he's, aha, Popeye is now a member of the trans community. Immediately, you're going to get people who are going to disregard every single other aspect of the character's personality, uh, needs, desires, wants, uh, adventures, all of that kind of stuff. And now there's only one part to their identity. One. That's what people do. And anyone throwing that term around, you're coming onto a new strip, you're a new writer, and you're like, oh, I think that I'm going to go ahead and and uh, throw a sexual identity, uh, a gender identity, on this character that I've been asked to take over. You know exactly what's going to happen. It is a self-inflicted wound. It is a very definition of that. And uh, again, if you're trying to get people excited about this idea of, of hey, I'm, I'm going to take over Popeye, I'm going to bring it back to its adventure roots, that sounds great to me too. I agree. That, that no issues. And the reality is, I don't think this story is a big deal in the sense that Breitbart and Fox News and others get involved in it, because I'll bet you anything, if you didn't see that interview and you didn't hear any of these comments from, uh, from the, uh, the new writer, if you just picked up Popeye and read it, I'll bet you would not notice. Uh, meaning, I don't think you'll, you know, you're not going to get any of these uh, gender politics or anything in there. You're just going to get a story. I'd be willing to bet that's the case. Some of you will disagree. That's fine. But I'm willing to bet stories just going to be adventure stories, Popeye, all, all fine. Which is why that it's not a big deal. Except it is a big deal. Because despite that, the writer still saw fit to, I'm going to just inject this little controversy into the whole mix. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in knowing full well what's going to happen, the people who are going to get angry about it, the people who are going to you know, support it for the absolute wrong reasons. I mean, people are not going to start picking up Popeye because he's part of the LGBTQ plus community. They're not going to do that. So it becomes this dumb little outrage. And for that, it is a big deal. Look, Popeye is Popeye has been chasing after olive oil for his entire career. Okay, Bluto tries to go. I mean, you could get into some weirdness about Popeye if you really want to, you know, play it. You know, Bluto's off trying to grab and molest her, and then Olive Oil is a helpless female victim that has to be rescued by the patriarch. I mean, you could, you could, if you really want to go down this path, we can make it real weird, real fast. But the reality is, you know, in the 40s and 50s, a comic gag was to put the characters in dresses, to call them a tough mother, to... I mean, how many times did Bugs Bunny dress up like a female rabbit in order to try and get the hunter horny? I mean, this, this, is, a, this is a regular cartoon trope, as they say. Are we now... Are we going to say that Bugs Bunny is trans or gender fluid? Is that... Do we... Because of that... Because of that style of humor that a cartoon character was written under, that's what we're going we're going to do that. Well, some people absolutely will. Kurt Cobain appeared in a dress for a music video, and that was enough for uh, Mag Zasaggio to immediately say he's trans. He's trans now. Anyone? Did you ever dress in drag at, at some point as a as either a joke or part of entertainment or whatever you were doing? You're now trans. That's the mentality of these people. It's, dis it's diseased, it's sick, and it's, it's stupid. Uh, the, look, in 2022, we cannot look at everything in, in the past, the past which is done, behind us, over. We cannot retroactively rewrite it using 2022 you know, standards, terms, and fads. Also, back in like the, the 30s, and the 40s, Mickey Mouse was in blackface in several instances. Is the character now irredeemably racist? 
I, of course not. Was this a acceptable gag that people did back during that time period? It was. Does that make it right? No, which is why we don't do it today. You don't, in 2022, we don't have the cartoon characters in blackface because we've all agreed as a society, unless you're Justin Trudeau, that that's unacceptable and not okay to do, which is fine as it should be. It does not mean that you need to go back in time and start, uh, you know, calling characters racist and, and everything else for jokes that are long, long past. And they are long, long past. I, I, th- this stuff is stupid. And unfortunately for, for Popeye here, it sabotages what may or may not be a good run. Because now, due to uh, whatever, you know, you could call it virtue signaling, you could call it taking the piss out of people. And, and when, unfortunately, part of the reaction is going to be, oh, look at all these uh, right-wing sites like, uh, like Breitbart. Look at them, uh, you know, throwing a tantrum, losing their mind over this. Ha, 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 look what I did. I triggered them. Snowflakes, I triggered them. I, I, great. If that's entertaining for you, cool. Does that help you sell books? Does triggering the right wing make any money, help the character, get new fans? We, we, for, I think it's, we have definitive proof at this point that, you know, basically throwing this stuff around is, is detrimental to the success. Not because the right wing will boycott it. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But even the side that is supposedly cheering you on and enjoys watching you taking the piss out of Fox News does not financially support your product. They financially support the trolling with their time, maybe with a GoFundMe, but they don't put their money into it. So why are you doing it? And that part is a big deal because if you love comics, and I love comics, I want to see comics get sold. I want them to get into the hands of readers. I want people, you know, new generations to discover this stuff. For me, anything that, that becomes friction to that goal is a big deal. And this is a throwaway joke. Again, Popeye is, they're not going to have Popeye show up at a pride flag and, and any of that kind of crap in the, the comic. He's not going to say He's not going to start listing off his pronouns as they, them. He's like, none of that's actually going to occur. So this isn't a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but it's absolutely a self-inflicted wound. It's an unforced error. It didn't need to happen. It was, it was dumb. The writer who did it knew exactly the kind of reaction that they would get, that he would get. If he threw out that Popeye is gender fluid because once upon a time, at some point in the past, Popeye put on a dress to try and sucker Bluto into something. That, that, that's why this is dumb. That's why this is a big deal. I, I just, uh, I guess I'm tired. And this is where the video went a little bit, you know, when I did this uh, yesterday. Um, it, I'm tired of this constant need to say, Hey, uh, it's going to be really funny if I control the side, the other side by reducing characters with decades of history to one specific aspect. In this case, not even a real one. I, you know, Iceman is going to be on the main X-Men team. He's, uh, he's joining the, the big leagues. He's going to be on, on the X-Men. And you look at Iceman as a character and you look at decades of work that went into building up his personality, kind of figuring everything else. Now you don't really have any, Iceman doesn't have a personality. His personality is gay. That's it. And that's the problem with this kind of stuff. It's, it's saying that we're giving up on any kind of personality, any kind of depth to characters and we're just going with the gender identity that that's all we're going to do. That's what I see is so harmful. And I, I do see that as kind of a big deal because I, I think it's a big, a bad deal to everyone, straight, gay, uh, whatever you happen to be. Yes. Even trans. 
if that's all you are, that's, that's the only facet of your identity that people want to focus on. I mean, are you even a person at that point? I'd like to be known by more than that. I want to be personality fluid. That's what I'd like to be. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it, it's, it, it's not a big deal in the sense that I do see all these articles uh, that are being written like, Popeye writer going to make uh, Popeye gender fluid, uh, part of the queer community. I'm seeing all these people jump. That none of that's going to happen. But it's still dumb. This was dumb. Anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.